guys, it's Wendy with Fab Craft Some More and I am here to show you how to make some tabs and photo mounts to use for junk journaling or really any craft. I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet. I had some people asking in a junk journal group about how to go about creating them. Now I made my own in Adobe Illustrator and made SVGs, but you can also make them right in Design Space for Cricut, and that's what I'm going to show you right now. If you're new here, hello and welcome, and if you are a returning watcher, thank you so much for coming and spending some time with me, and if you like the content, I would love it if you would give me some thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down there, and also the bell notification so you get notified when I upload new videos. So I'm going to go to New Project and open up the canvas. If you are fairly new to Cricut, this is the Design Space Canvas, and um, you have options up here. You need to be logged in. You need to have chosen which machine you want to use. I have the original Maker machine, and so I have chosen that over here, at Cricut Maker, and let's start out with the famous <laughs> Whale Tail Tab. This will be a good introduction to you if you haven't used the slice function. The whale tail tabs uh, from looking online are approximately two and a half inches. They're a circle with kind of a little cutout on the edges. To start out, I'm going to go to shapes. I'm going to choose a circle. And you can drag your circle to whatever size you want, or you can come up here to the top of the screen where it says size, and you can either arrow up and down to change the size, or you can just highlight it and type. And I'm going to go ahead and just type that right out. And up here, you can see this little lock button or unlock button. And we want to keep it locked for this because we don't we want a circle, not an oval. And so now it's already sized to the two and a half, and you can see that. If you want it to be bigger, you can come down here at the bottom left hand corner and you can size this up. I am on a Mac, so commands that I'm using are for a Mac. If things are a little bit different for a PC, you should be able to figure those out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring it to the center of the screen. It doesn't matter where it's placed. On the screen here and then I'm also going to change it to a different color because we're going to bring in another shape and I don't want them to be exactly the same color so I can see where I'm placing things better. So I do have the um, access subscription with Cricut which gives me some extra shapes to use over here and I'm going to go ahead and choose what they're calling a decorative label and I'm going to choose that and I'm going to bring it right over here. And if you take a look at the picture of the whale tail tab, you, I'll flash it up on the screen here. You can kind of just sort of eyeball how far in you want this to go. And for this, I'm gonna go ahead and line this circle up with one of these grid squares right here. And it's not exact, but it's, pretty good. I'm going to come in about a half an inch. So you can see like this is a whole inch. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares. And um, I'm going to come in about four squares. So I'm trying to line this little guy up right here with that. And I want it right in the middle. What? But we're also going to make one on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this first. So as long as this is selected, so see if I click out here, it's deselected. If I click on it, there's a box around it and it's selected. I can come up here to the upper right and choose duplicate. And it's going to give me another one. And I want to bring that one over here to this side and line it up as best I can four squares over so that they're going to be the same distance apart. And now you can see though that they are not lined up, but I can, what I can do is I can select, drag over all three shapes, come up here to align, and what I want to do is center them vertically. So I'm gonna go right like that, and then that centers them so that these are in the same place. Now, if you look at just the purple and sort of get your eyes to erase the shape of this label, 
you can see what's starting to look like the shape of the whale tail tab. Now, now we're gonna use the slice option, which is down here in the lower right corner, but right now you can see everything's grayed out because we don't have anything selected. Now, if I select all three shapes, it is still grayed out and you can't use it because you can only use slice with two shapes or two elements. So if I just drag over the purple circle and this label shape, now you can see slice. Another option, I'm going to throw this out there. If you are new to Cricut, this is a little advanced, but I'm going to select one label. I'm going to hold down shift and select the other label. And now I'm going to go down here and choose weld. And what weld does is it makes two or more shapes or elements one thing. Now, even though they're not touching, I'm going to choose weld. And now you can even see, let me undo it. You can see here they were two shapes on two layers and now when I weld them they're on the same layer and they are one thing so I can move them around now and they move around as one. I'm just going to do command Z to undo. So now from here I can go ahead and select that whole, all three of those shapes because now these two label shapes are considered to the design space software to be one shape and now you can see that I can choose slice. So I'm going to go ahead and choose slice and what that does is now if you look here hopefully you can see it on the sides of the video you're watching you can see a cer the circle line going all the way around. Now what you do is you choose the parts you want to take away. Now see those are all one shape now so they're going to move at the same time. Then I'm going to take those two away and now, now you can see the line of the label there. Well what that did was it sliced away the purple parts too. And so now here we are left with the almost finished whale tail. And now if you look at a whale tail tab, these little parts right here are sliced off, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use the slice option again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a square shape and I'm going to create a square and I'm going to get this lined up because we're going to use the grid as a guide. I'm going to get this little, these little corners lined up right here. And again, it's not two and a half inches anymore. It's even a tiny bit less than one, two and an eighth. Um, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's it's going to be all right. But now we have a square and when you choose the square shape from design space, you can choose a rectangle, but I'm just going to choose the square and show you this because right now, if you come up to where you can enter in the size up the top of the screen, that little lock is locked. When it's locked and you drag, it stays a square. When you unlock it, you can drag it to make any size of rectangle that you want, okay? So what I want to do is create a rectangle that is going to cut off. I wanna make sure that it's longer than the circle. So we're just gonna make it nice and long there. And now we want to cut off these little pointy parts. And right now it's not centered, but it's also not quite the size I want it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit wider and now I'm going to drag to select both shapes and I'm going to use this align function again to center horizontally and now it's in the center it's going to cut off you know what I want it just a little bit bigger I can do that and then I'm going to go ahead and drag to select both I'm going to align center and now I'm going to select both again, come down here to the lower right and choose slice. Now I'm going to take away this big chunk first. And now I'm going to take away the chunk out of this charcoal gray. So there's that chunk. And now we have some little pieces. And now here we have our whale tail tab shape. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to cut this out. So I'm just going to go through, we don't need any of these other shapes. I'm just gonna select them and 
click delete. So now you can choose to cut this out and just fold it on your own, or we can add a score line to make it just a tad bit easier to fold. So how we do that is you come up to shapes and choose this line, the score line that's right up here, okay? And then what you do is you just rotate it. Now you can hold the shift key down when you rotate and it will lock it at 45 degrees and 90 degrees and it'll just make, because if you don't use it, you'll get it slanted and you'll have to work hard to line it up. So let's go ahead and get back here. And I'm gonna come down here and increase the size so I can see it better. So now what you wanna do, I'm just gonna hold the shift key while I turn it. I'm gonna drag it over here and then just, you can use the, the little um, arrow key there or the, it's not a key, but the little, this is what makes things bigger and smaller. And so I'm gonna come in even closer. And now I want this in the exact middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag across and you can see how this has become a score line. Um, it has the little dots. And so now I'm going to go ahead and center it. And now it's right in the center. So now we have a score line and if you wanted that to be a cut line, you can go up here and change it to a cut line. And now it's a solid line. I want it to be a score line. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit undo. So now when we go ahead and go to make this, it's going to score this line so it makes it easy for us to fold and cut out the shape. Doesn't matter what color is showing right now on the screen because it's, you're gonna be cutting it out in whatever color paper you place on your mat. So then from here, you just go to make it. And we're in my machine, I'm gonna do it on the regular mat, 12 by 12, and click continue. And now see what happens is it's giving me the score line and the cut line on two different mats. And that's not what we wanna do. So we're gonna cancel that cut. We need to click and drag to select both of the score line and the cut and we need to click attach, okay? You do not click weld in this case because then that will, if you click weld, it will just make the tab and the score line one element and you won't get the score line. So we click attach and then when you go back to make it, we're gonna use the mat 12 by 12, we're gonna continue and now you have it on one mat. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna go back one more time. We're gonna cancel one more time. Let's say you want 10 of these, okay? You can select this little guy and you can come up here in the upper right-hand corner and we already have one, so we just need nine more. And so you just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now we have 10 on our mat. You do not need to arrange them at all how you want them unless you need to have them in this specific spot. But they have all been attached. You can see they've been attached. And these are the two things under this little arrow. Those have been attached. We go to make it. We're gonna hit the mat again, 12 by 12, continue. And it's already placed them cl close enough. It's trying to conserve space on your paper. Now, let's say you are using an eight by 10 or um, a letter size then you wanna do it like that. And so now you will take it to the um, Cricut and cut them out, but we're gonna go back and we're gonna make some different ones. So I also wanted to show you from here when we go to make it and we're on the mat, I showed you how you can duplicate to create multiple of the tabs to cut out, but we can also do it from here. So up here, project copies, right now it's showing one. We can just go up here and you can arrow up or down to um, get to the number you want and click apply. And then there we have 10. So if you come in and you have just loaded up one, you don't have to go back to the canvas to create your duplicates. You can do it right here on the mat. So see how easy that was? Now I can, I'm gonna show you, um, because I have these already uploaded as the SVGs that I created in um, Cricut Design Space. 
Um, so there's our whale tail tab. And then so this shape, if you can see, is created with a rectangle. And then that label shape again brought in on each side. So it's the same thing. We're going to go here. I'm just going to go ahead and choose this rectangle shape since it's already chosen. This happens to be a rounded rectangle shape. So you, we're, I'm going to use it and you can make this whatever size you want. And let's go ahead and try and make it this a little this size like so. So here we have our rectangle. If you don't have Cricut access to access this shape, you can go to images and type in label, hit enter, and come over here and choose the free options. And you can see that there are a bunch of free label shapes in Design Space, so you don't have to have access, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and choose this one is pretty much the closest to um, what we want, and I'm gonna add that to the canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a different color by coming up here under Operation. You just come up here to the square. I'm gonna go ahead and make it blue, and then I'm going to just use my SVG as a guide like so and that's about right make it maybe a little bit bigger and I'm going to bring it in to about there and then again I'm just going to stay um, selected on that I'm going to come up to the upper right corner and choose duplicate and then I'm going to bring that one over and Oh, we do want to measure this a little bit better. So let's bring this in and see where we're at. And so I'm going to bring this one over. I'm going to use this as a guide. One, two, three, four. I'm going to come in five, about five, like so. And then over here, I'm going to come in one, two, three, four, five, like so. That's about right. And then I'm just going to select those, come up to align, and align vertically. You don't want to choose the center on this one because it's going to bring everything aligning to the center point. I'm going to undo that, and here we have our shapes. I'm going to show you, I sh maybe it should have done it like this on the first one instead of going all crazy and welding these two shapes together, but I'm going to go ahead and select these two and slice. And then now it's just quicker to do weld the two um, label shapes together. Woo, that's not what I wanted to do. So let's go ahead and send that to the back. Then we'll click on that. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose both of those shapes. Select slice. I'll bring that over here and this over here. And now for some reason it sends that to the back. So I'm just going to move the big one. And now we have our tab shape. Now this tab shape, we had chosen a rounded rectangle. You don't have to choose the rounded one. But there you have your like file folder tab. We want to add a score line. So we go to shapes, come up to the score line right here, and then hold when you rotate it, hold the shift key down so you can get that nice 90 degree angle and bring it over here. I'm going to zoom in so I can see that I'm in the right spots. I'm going to now choose both of them and center vertically. So that's right in the center. And then now we do need to attach them or else when we go to make it, you're going to get your score line on one mat and your label on the other. The score line is like its own entity and it doesn't um, let you choose a color for it. And so you have to make sure, let's go ahead and change this back to a color where we can see the score line. You want to make sure that you select and attach your score line to your uh, anything that you want to score and fold over. Okay, so there's our file folder tab, and I'm going to delete all the little extra pieces that we had. And then now we'll go and we'll make a photo mount, which is super easy because it's just squares. But it does, we are going to use the weld function on this one. So we're going to come over here and I'm going to choose the rounded corner square. I want it to be two and a half inches. So I can either drag it to two and a half inches or I can just come up here, 
highlight it and choose 2.5 and enter and there we go. Now I'm going to cut a square out of it and you could do a rounded square out of it. I'm going to choose to do a square square out of it. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and come up here and change it to a different color so it makes it easier to see. And then I'm sort of just going to eyeball it. You can measure out. If you know how wide you want this frame to be, you can measure it out. But honestly, I'm just going to eyeball it. And I think that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to drag and select both and choose the center alignment option and then that makes it perfectly centered. So now we have two squares, one on top of each other. I'm going to select it so we have both selected and I can come down here and choose slice and now what slice does, it's like a cookie cutter. I can drag all these little pieces apart and so now I have this frame but I want two frames connected so I'm going to go ahead and delete these little pieces. I don't need them anymore. I'm going to select my frame my square that I just cut the square out of and I'm going to choose duplicate. Then I'm going to drag and select both of those and I'm going to choose center horizontally and that gets them lined up really nice. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in because I want to be able to see where they're going to connect. I'm going to click off of it so I unselected them so I can just select this one square again. Now I'm going to drag it downward, but I'm going to hold shift as I drag it because if I don't hold shift, I can just move it all around and it's hard to just get it in the right exact place. So if you hold shift while you drag, it keeps it lined up with the other shape. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to line it up until I can't see any white between there. I'm also going to come in a little bit more and there it did line up so that there's no white in there. So now we will zoom out a little bit. I'm going to drag to select both of those and now I'm going to choose the weld option and what the what you can see that little line disappeared. So now instead of two square shapes this is one shape that can't be broken apart. That's what weld does. It makes two or more shapes one shape. So now we have our frame and we want to add a score line just to make it easier to fold. So we've already done this before. Same thing. Grab your score line, drag it over, hold shift, turn it so that it lines up. Let's get up a little bit closer. And I'm going to line that up so that this little guy is right up there and then I can make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to select everything because I want to make sure that it is centered horizontally. Actually, I'm going to just choose center because I want it centered horizontally and vertically. And now it's right in the center, both horizontal and vertical. Now we will drag to select both the score line and the frame and choose attach. And so let's zoom out so we can see all our shapes. Let's make it a pretty color. It doesn't really matter, but. Oh, in order to do that, I have to detach, select only the frame. That's, I think that's a bug. It hasn't done that in the past. You could select, okay, and attach. So these were my SVGs that I created in Adobe Illustrator and loaded up into here. And then these are the ones that I created just using shapes in Design Space. Uh, squares, rectangles, and the label shape. So on the purple one, I because I have access to Cricut Design Space, I was able to use this shape out of the shapes, but I think you have to have access in order to uh, use these extra shapes that are not the free shapes. But if you go to images again and type label, you can find these shapes or whatever other shape you're looking for. Um, and then we can click back onto the canvas to show what we've got. I'm going to go ahead and delete the ones that I loaded up, the SVG files that I loaded up on my own, and show you how this works. So you can see it tells you that these two things are attached. 
and below this arrow, these two things are attached. And again, for the purple um, whale tail, they are attached. And that's what we want, because if they're not attached and we go to make it, you're going to have your score lines separate loading on a separate mat. And that's not what we want. So if you want to duplicate, if you want to cut these out, um, you know, more than one, just click on it and choose duplicate. For whatever you want, you do not have to arrange them if you don't want to. You can, if you arrange them in a certain way and you want them to stay in that position, then what you have to do is you have to click and drag and choose attach. Okay, when you choose attach, it's going to turn them all one color because it is assuming that you're going to cut this, when you attach things, they're gonna load up all on one mat and it's assuming you're gonna cut those all out on one mat in one color, okay? Otherwise, if things are different colors when we go to make it, here we are, it's loading them on to different colored mats, okay? We're gonna go back. So from here, we wanna make them all the same color so that they're gonna cut out on the same mat because it won't let you just select and come grab the color because it's also selecting the score line and you can't choose a color for the score line. So what you have to do is come over here to the layers, click on your shape and it'll show the color of the shape. Click on that, then you can come over and we're gonna make them just all light gray. And, but you have to do it for each one this way. So if you know you're gonna cut them all out on the same page, just make them all the same color before you duplicate. Um, and then you won't have to come through and select them individually like this. All right, so I ch went ahead and changed these to all the same color. These are the ones that we created in Design Space, and these are the SVGs that I created in Adobe Illustrator. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. I've cut them out and used them and they work great, but we're going to use these ones that we just created. And I'm gonna go ahead and everything is attached and ready to go. And because they're all the same color, they're gonna load on the same mat. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose Make It. We're gonna be cutting on the mat and we're going to click continue and I these have all loaded now together on the same map so if you want to just cut out one at a time then you just so choose one don't have the other ones on your canvas actually let's go back and I can show you you can hide them so you would come up to where it says attach and click on the eyeball and it will hide whichever ones you don't want and then you can hide multiples at the same time. So then when you go to make it, it's just going to bring up that one file folder tab. Okay, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to go ahead and unhide. I'm going to show everything. Go back to make it. We're going to cut on the mat. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose two of each and apply. And then I'm going to choose, I thought I choose, chose Letta. Um, and then it's going to arrange them how it thinks it should be arranged. If you want to move them around, you can. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring this little guy up here um, just because. And But you can just leave it how Cricut loads them up if you want to. You can even rotate them like so. You know, you have a patterned paper and you want to make it artistic and so you can do it to an angle and if you have a striped piece of paper um, and you were going to cut it like this your stripes would just be up and down but if you turned it at an angle then you would get stripes that are diagonal which might be kind of cool um, so there's different things to think about also you need to take into consideration that Cricut measures a quarter of an inch from the edge so even though you have a letter size paper or whatever size paper it's always going to cut in a quarter inch from the edge so I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. And it's going to connect to my maker via Bluetooth. You can also choose to use the um, hard wire cord. Sometimes it takes it a second to connect. And I have a light card stock on my mat that I'll show you here in just a moment, but I'm gonna choose light card stock. 
And because I have a maker, I do have the scoring wheel. If you don't have the scoring wheel and you just have the scoring tool, you can come up to edit tools and you can choose the scoring stylus if you have that. Otherwise, if you don't score, if you don't have these tools, then you just want to leave that score line off when you create your file and just you can use place your tabs on a score board and score them yourself after you've cut them. So I'm going to stay with the scoring wheel because I do have that. And then I'm going to go ahead and load my map. So we're going to switch over to the machine here and watch it cut out. All right, so here we are at the machine. I have a letter size uh, light card stock. I think it's one of the paper packs from Michael's or Joann's. Um, and you can see that the load mat button is ready. You wanna slide your mat underneath the little tabs there and make sure that it's right up against there. And then we'll go ahead and we will push load. I like to hold it a little bit as it loads. And I do have, um, can't really see that, but that is the scoring wheel uh, in there. And now it is flashing on the Cricut button. So we are gonna go ahead and click that. And it's nice. And it's gonna score first. All right, so now up on the screen, it is telling me to load the fine point blade. So I will take that little guy out, grab my fine point blade, make sure it's in there all the way. And then the button is flashing again. So as soon as the fine point blade is loaded, we push it and here we go. And now it's finished and so we click the unload button and it unloads the mat and I'm being kind of lazy today. I don't have my phone set up on my camera mount, <laughs> um, but here are the finished products and we've got our whale tail. Let me see if I can get that off here with one hand. I should be able to. There we go. Like so. Okay, I decided to quit being lazy and I went and got my camera mount. Um, and so let's take this off the, the regular way. So usually I, I bend my mat a little bit and then pull the paper off. So you're not bending the paper while you pull it off, but these come off pretty easy. And we'll just get that off. Like so. And then you can also use, if you have your little spatula, your little Cricut spatula, but here we have the file folder tab. And there you have that. So you can just glue that on a piece of paper like so. And then you have a nice little file folder tab. We have our whale tail tab and same thing. You just glue it on. Now, if this is plain, um, sort of like a cream paper, but you can decorate these. If you're not cutting them out of decorative paper already, you can um, stamp on them or ink them, spray them, paint them, whatever you wanna do. But then there you have your photo mount. And <laughs> we created these all in Design Space. So 
if you do know how to create these files in Adobe Illustrator and create an SVG, then you can load those up to Cricut Design Space and cut those as well, which is what I did with these. These are the ones that I created in Adobe Illustrator and or whatever design program you have, you can create them in Inkspace too. But that so that's it. Thanks for uh, watching and I hope this was helpful. I hope this gives you some ideas of some things you can add to your arsenal of junk journaling or just crafting in general. These can be used in bullet journals or uh, your, you know, your calendars that you're making. Really anything that needs a tab. These are just for decorative. They don't really go along with tabs, but these photo mounts, you can put little photos in there and um, you know glue them on for collages or scrapbooking um, or junk journaling. So yeah, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It should be somewhere right down there and have a great day.